Hey guys, welcome back. This time around we're going to take a look at the pathways of catabolism. Remembering that catabolism is a set of reactions in metabolism in which we take foodstuffs and break it down to generate energy. Now universally the nutrient that is used to describe catabolism is going to be glucose because it will begin at the initial set of reactions in catabolism and matriculate through all the reactions associated with catabolism. The other nutrients do not start at the beginning. They filter in somewhere along the way of that pathway. For this reason, we also will use glucose when we're describing the aerobic cellular respiration equation, in which glucose in the presence of oxygen will be broken down to water, carbon dioxide, usable energy in the form of ATP, and heat, which is a non-usable energy. Now remember this reaction is about 38% efficient, which means that the vast majority of the potential energy will be released as heat. Now the set of reactions that are associated with catabolism include glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, along with oxidative phosphorylation. Before we get too involved in looking at these sets of reactions, let's first get some ground rules as to where they are located inside the cell. If you take a look at this image here, you will see that glycolysis occurs in the cytosol. Now the cytosol is the fluid component of the cytoplasm. Now glycolysis is going to be a set of eight or so enzymatic reactions that are clustered together. And what they will do is they'll take glucose and break it down to peruvic acid, also known as pyruvate. In the process of breaking it down to pyruvate, which is a three carbon molecule, it will generate ATP. Now that ATP is going to be generated at the substrate level. So it's substrate level phosphorylation. Notice it will also produce some chemical energy. That chemical energy is going to be built from high energy electrons. Now those high energy electrons are actually going to be transported from the cytosol into the mitochondria on the backs of hydrogen ions and those hydrogen ions are going to be carried there using a carrier molecule known as NAD. Now let's take a look at the Krebs cycle. Now the Krebs cycle is going to be found inside of the mitochondria. Also note that we will find that the electron transport chain will be found there as well. Now before we talk too much about these two sets of reactions, let's talk about the structure of the mitochondria. Notice the mitochondria is a kidney bean shaped structure. And the cross-sectional cut of it gives you a lot of invaginations, or folds. Now those folds are called cresta. And those cresta are going to outline that fluid-filled container there. And that fluid in that container is known as the matrix. Now the set of re enzymatic reactions associated with Krebs cycle are going to be found in the matrix of the mitochondria. Notice that pyruvate comes into the Krebs cycle, what will lead the Krebs cycle will be carbon dioxide. So that pyruvate will be completely combusted. In the process of combusting that, that uh, pyruvate to carbon di dioxide, we will generate ATP, again at the substrate levels, phosphorylation. And we'll also again generate high energy electrons, the chemical energy. And we'll carry those as hydrogen ions. And those hydrogen ions will be transported to the another site within the mitochondria using carrier molecules NAD and this time FAD as well. Now finally let's look at oxidative phosphorylation in the electron transport chain. Notice it's going to occur in the mitochondria but in this case it's going to occur along those folds. Again these are sets of enzymatic reactions that are embedded within the folds themselves. Those folds are called crista and that is the reason why you have such heavily invagination there or folding to increase the surface area so you have more surface area for these sets of reactions to occur. Now these sets of reactions will actually be taking those high energy electrons and they'll be utilizing the energy stored in those electrons to generate phosphate bonds to ADP molecules. This is known as oxidative phosphorylation. Now those hydrogens that will be carrying those high energy electrons will be run through a cycle and when they come out the energy has been sucked from them and they'll be 
donated to an oxygen molecule that is there to make the water. So the only place that oxygen is actually used in this whole process we will see is in oxidative phosphorylation. Now let's have a quick summary here. So far we've learned that catabolism is a set of reactions in which we break down foodstuffs to generate energy. We've learned that that set of reactions is only about 38% efficient. We've learned that glucose is the key molecule here that is going to be utilized in catabolism. In fact, glucose is the blood sugar that we talk about in our blood. We also discovered that there's three sets of reactions associated with catabolism. Glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. Glycolysis occurs in the cytosol, whereas the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain occur within the mitochondria. We learned that the Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix. The electron transport chain and their set of reactions occur along the lining, inner lining of the mitochondria known as the cresta. We also learned that during glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, we have substrate level phosphorylation. During the electron transport chain is when we will see the oxidative phosphorylation occur. You guys have a great day. See you later.